Great to have you back here on The Breakfast. The Enugu State House of Assembly has stepped down the life pension bill, granting benefits to former governors of the state and their deputies. The bill was stepped down after a public outcry from organizations and indigents of the state. Yesterday, a group of people gathered outside the State House of Assembly for a protest against the bill. The now-arrested bill guarantees a lifetime annual basic salary for former governors. It also makes provision for house maintenance allowance, salary for five domestic staff, three vehicles to be replaced every four years, and free medical services. In addition, there is a 12 million naira annual medical allowance for wives of former governors and 6 million naira for wives of former deputy governors. All right. This morning, we are joined by Mr. Ben Nassen to, of course, quickly share his thoughts on this. Uh, good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Yes, thanks. All right. Uh, let's first let's get you in to share your thoughts on you know this. You know there was you know, outcry for a couple of days. Um, I followed up you know on the the conversations concerning this life pension, um, and of course uh, then there was the protest yesterday, which eventually led to the bill being suspended for now. Although. Uh, the speaker at that protest said that the, or the you know, uh, person who addressed the crowd, I need to get his name, said that the bill will be suspended, but it would be looked at again. But let's get you to, first of all, share your thoughts on the whole idea of a life pension for governors in Enugu State. All right. Th thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having this program. Yeah, so uh, my personal thoughts on what of my pension job about this. I mean, this is a very ridiculous bill to have at this point. Because if you look at what is happening in the country right now, we have the numbers that from the MBS. Nigeria has an unemployment rate of 33%, and inflation rate of, you know, 17%. Our, our very meager, uh, you know, minimum wage of the lowest in the world, by the way, has, hasn't even been implemented. And now you're having these governors who want to put themselves on life pension. Now, if you look at the question, Enugu State, Enugu State, I spoke with a woman from Enugu State yesterday, and she's a retired primary school teacher who has been old for since as far as 2004. She has been months and months and years of pension. I mean, these are people who essentially subsidize the public school system so they don't go to school. Now, if you look at the poverty rate in Enugu State, is 58 percent unemployment rate in Enugu is something else 27 percent unemployment rate the employment is around 20 percent so essentially we're having an unemployment rate of something percent if you look at Enugu State uh, foreign debt it's one of the highest in the country it's it, it's indebted to you know, 126 billion billion naira so a state like Enugu State should be thinking of policies should be coming up with money into the state as opposed to taking it. Mind you, these are the same media who has got us in this turmoil that we have. They run the government, they run the government, and now they want us to, you know, use the few resources that are left to reward them for incompetence or corruption. I am highly against this law, my organization is highly against this law, and I think I'm very grateful that we are waking up and going to, you know, Protest when such things come up. I'm really proud of the country and people who came out in March today, you know, to try to put them to this, this this selfish and corrupt law. Thank you. What you can see is basically the breakdown of the bill that uh, was proposed by the uh, Enugu State uh, lawmakers. We're seeing just how much was going to be appropriated to them, the uh, staff their wives, deputies, even as far as, you know, for the government to foot the financial cost of the burial of, you know, governors of the state. So, Mr. Ben, really, we've been talking about kidnapping as a lucrative business. It seems politics is even more lucrative with uh, over about 900% of the salaries of governors, you know, to be given to them as pension for life. So what happened to politics of selfless service to the people? I mean, tell me what we have to this bill is, it, it, I mean, like you said, the best way to call this bill is uh, as 
Bitcoin is slogan typically fits to the same telling. It says so much money to death do us back. That is essentially what it's all about. So what we have in Nigeria is so you know, our politics essentially has become a place where people come and say seek rent twice. So they, they, they are staying in the government houses, they're just occupying those places and doing nothing, and then they are just taking their money. And you know, the issue of insecurity, like I said, it's just a mirror image of how we're running our society. You know, a situation where people are going to the war and the only thing they can turn to is kidnapping and you know all sorts of crises. So I think I think that this uh the issue of it happening the issue of bad governance happening in Nugu is is related. All right. The, of course, uh, just to clarify, it was the Speaker of the House, you know, who addressed the protesters yesterday, uh, Edward Ubosi, who addressed the, uh, the protesters yesterday and uh, said that the bill, you know, would be uh, put on pause until uh, it is uh, looked further into. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I want to also, you know, quickly note that uh, two weeks ago, in the last two weeks, actually, there have been massive campaigns about zero water in Inugu, uh, um, Inugu State. Um, it's a state that has, over time, continued to deal with the water crisis. Um, and in the last um, you know, few weeks, the people have also continued to complain bitterly about what the, you know, where, why you know, the, there was no water you know, in the state at all. It was, it was you know, very, very intense. Um, and so it's you know, crazy to see that you know, in the middle of that conversation, we're talking about life pension for governors. Um, Asem Bem, let, let's you know, get you to share um, on this once again. Civil servants in the state work for 30, 35 years, you know, before they are eligible for pension. Um, and of course, that pension, of course, many times we get to hear people complain that they've not been, they have been owed pensions for years. So how does it make sense that a governor who is in position for eight years also wants to get pension for life? Can you hear us? Mr. Ben, are you there? Him. Your line went yeah. Okay. Okay. Did you get my question? Yes, I, did, I, I got some part, but I didn't get the end part. I, I, I was asking, you know, that you know, civil servants who work yes. for 30, 35 years, dedicate their lives to, um, you know, the country for, you know, more than three decades. Um, a Absolutely. lot of times still have to complain that they've not been paid pensions. You see people collapsing, you know, while they're trying to get their pensions, 80-year-old, 70-year-old men. So how does yeah. it make sense that a state house of assembly feels it is okay to put a bill forward, to give a governor who's only been in, in seat for eight years pension for life? And we're talking 900% annual basic salary. We're talking about paying for burial. We're talking of 12 million naira for the wives of governors who really have no role um, in the state. Help, help us understand the gravity of all of this. I think, I think this law is very corrupt, very selfish. I mean, it goes how much people in leadership are, are open to you know, uh, just essentially uh, freezing the poverty level in the country. I mean, it's it, 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 it ridiculous. You look at the numbers of, uh, I mean, like the, the number of months that pensioners owed is ridiculous. There are some states in this country that spent as been owed for over 22 months. There's a state I read of. They said pension was for, for a few years. You know, and, you know, you come back and you want to reward yourself for putting people in penury. I think it's totally unacceptable. If you look at the way the Grand State is, right now what we're thinking of is how to bring in money to invest in the young people. But you have governors who are willing to, you know, give themselves more money and the average the average leader in Nigeria, the average leader in Nigeria is basically not accountable so when they're in office they have access to all the cars they can all the travel they can access everything they want then they, when they are done they still want to continue milking the country they go i think it's, I think it's a terrible law it's a very terrible law and it's a very terrible thing. let's try an idea of what is happening does According it uh... to vanguard newspaper 
21 Nigerian states spent over 367 billion naira in servicing 48 governors in just four years. And when you look at some of these governors, a good number of them have gone over to become uh, senators, ministers in this country. So I think this is a part of it, and it's totally unacceptable. Whereas we have civil servants who spent 35 years, and there's no pain. I mean, we don't have to talk about this because it's, it's happening all around us. It's everywhere. There's hardly any pensioner I go to that is, you, know, you speak to that is able to, to afford his basic health care. Something as basic as health care, you can't have. The first thing in your country was exciting. It's unacceptable. And it so goes to um... how the Nigerian law, I mean, the Nigerian Constitution is working. So you look at the Constitution. It's, it's a political war against the people. All right, Asambem, let me, let me the come people. in here, and we'll have to also quickly apologize for the poor quality of uh, um, audio um, on this uh, conversation. But I, I want to ask, you know, if we should take Edward Obosi seriously here. Yeah. Uh, if you remember sometime last year, in November 2020, the Lagos State Governor, Babajide Songwolu, had also made mention of, you know, plans to repeal pension for ex-governor's um, uh, uh, laws that were, you know, in Lagos State. And the same thing in Kwara State. Uh, former uh, governor of the state, Bukala Sarkin, of course, former Senate president, uh, was in the news also. You know, um, his aide apparently was, you know, making some noise about, you know, th those laws getting repealed. So do, you, do we take Edward Obosi seriously here when he says that the law or the bill is going to be suspended and, you know, would, you know, be looked into, you know, in the future? I mean, if, if, if you look, if you look back, uh, uh, to these guys, if, if we just go back, up, I mean, it may, even, it may even sneak, just sneak in and implement the law without us. So we are going to continue asking questions. So you mentioned Lagos State, uh, that Lagos State said, you know, in November that they were going to, they haven't ended. Bokora State, you know, they, they, they were, they were already not end the law, to repeal the law, as you said. What we did in Lagos was, we have, we have constantly, we have contact people in Lagos, the special to the governor, to the governor of Lagos, what him, is giving us when that will be done. We hope that will be done too. The same thing applies for uh, Enugu State. The masses can go and sit down for a while, but later they get up and protest. Again, because if one flip, these guys are going to continue with this plot. We already know it's, there, it's bad, and we have to move and take against it. We don't have to, don't have to relax. All, All right. right. Ben Asen, thank you very much for coming on The Breakfast this morning. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much. All right. Once again, we will apologize for the poor quality of that audio. This Enugu State story is shocking. It's a state that has, according to the MBS, a 58% poverty rate in the state. State governments are struggling to pay 30,000 naira minimum wage. You have cases where in Enugu teachers have been owed salaries and you're talking about pension for life for governors. I mean, should we not be discussing ways to cut the cost of governance instead and channel this money into, you know, sectors that it's, it's, it's most needed? It really but, doesn't, for me, you know, it really doesn't matter what state it happens. It doesn't matter if the state has, you know, great IGR, if, if it has, you know, zero unemployment, or it has, you know, air conditions on the streets swimming pools at every junction. Those things, you know, don't matter to me. What I, you know, I'm concerned really about is one of the things that I asked. Why does a governor deserve pension for life for being governor for four or eight years? That's what exactly makes it necessary? Why are you give him 300% of his honor based salary, 900% here, 300% here, 200% here? Why? That just Why does the state need to cater for an ex-governor? Don't people have jobs after they leave office? Don't people, you know, go back to being doctors or being lecturers or being businessmen after they leave office? Why does the state need to then spend billions of naira catering for three, four governors who are no longer in office? When people who have worked their whole lives, there are people who worked in the uh, Nigerian Railway Corporation, there are people who worked in the police force, people who are lecturers, who are teachers, firefighters, so many of them that 
don't get the same pensions. Their pensions are peanuts, to be to be honest. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, they go months and months and years without getting the same pensions. Mm -hmm. um, so why does a governor who was in state for eight years that you cannot really point to any major development that you know, the state saw um, or you know um, achieved in the time that he was there? Why does he deserve to be taken care of for life? On taxpayers' money. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm glad that people, you know, were able to speak up to, you know, have this development we have now and, uh, you know, for the bill to be suspended. Just trying to, to say that all people are equal, but some are, are more equal than others. But uh, let's see how this bill goes, really, if they revisit it, revisit it as they said earlier. So we'll take a break here and uh, come back to tell you about a Nigerian mathematical genius. <laughs> 